Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We've just seen the end of the Olympic Games in London. This amazing spectacle of hype and entertainment extravaganza has come to an end. So it's a good point at which we can ask the question of why exactly do we have the Olympic Games and why is it so important for nations like Britain to host the Olympic Games? Prior to the Games, David Cameron said that Great Britain is open for business. And he's gone on record as saying that the 12 odd billion pounds that it's costing Britain to run the Olympic Games is going to be fully recovered in future years. Let's look at this. In past games, without exception, they have always overrun their budgets. And the British budget of 3.4 billion rapidly blew out to 9 billion. 1976 Olympics in Montreal was actually came in at a cost of eight times of what it was budgeted for. It took them 30 years to pay it off. And untold damage was done to the Greek economy since 2004 with its hosting of the Olympics. So the commercial case is by no means clear. Uh, the Olympic OIC committee takes the benefits of the Olympic symbols. The sponsors, of which there are many, in fact it's quite bizarre to note that uh, soft drink manufacturers and burger chains are the dominant uh, sponsors of these games, games which are supposed to be all about uh, athletic prowess and, and uh, elite performance. Yet the commercial benefits are far less than what the games are costing to run, especially for the host nation. So this is not really a solution. Secondly, we've seen a lot talked about what's known as a sporting legacy. A lot of commentators are saying what a boost this will mean to future generations in the UK. And of course there has been a pickup in the numbers of, of young people getting active and involved in sports as a result of Olympic Games. But what are the benefits of that? Some have even suggested that there's a long-term health benefit from uh, improved, improved athleticism and, and that people take part in sports regularly. But I note when I watch the television we've all seen these pot-bellied uh, commentators, many of which were former Olympians, and we can conclude that many of them look no different from you or I in terms of the sporting prowess. So this is very tenuous, and in fact, if this was so important in terms of getting everyone to participate in sports, why is it that the government is allowing so many of our school playgrounds to be sold off to property developers? Sport participation rates in the UK have been going down steadily, and we certainly don't need nine billion plus to be spent just to get people more active in sports. So what really is the reason behind the hype of the Olympic Games. I think if you look at the medal ceremonies and the emphasis on the medal tables, you will see a clue. We can all visualize those images of athletes draping themselves in the national flag, some of which even put these flags around them before their event was finished. There is so much hype around who is winning and the medal ceremonies and the playing of national anthems. And I think this goes against what the Olympics is really all about. If you actually go to the Olympic Charter, it states, the Olympic Games are competitions between athletes in individual or team events and not between countries. Well, you could have fooled me. It seems to me that it is all about country against country competition. The main moment I can remember of this was when one of the UK commentators got so excited near the end of one of the long distance running events and he in a high pitched voice said, look, the British athlete is finally going to beat the Africans. Well, they all looked African to me and in fact the British athlete he was talking about, Mohamed Farah, Although he was brought up in the British school system, 
was born in Somalia. He trains in the US. Well, you couldn't blame him with the amount of rain that we have in the UK. And he has a, a Cuban-born coach. So how do we work that one out? The real emphasis that the governments and the media have put upon this uh, nationalistic competition can be best seen in terms of the competition within the medal table. For years we've seen the struggle between the Soviets and the US for supremacy in terms of the Olympic medal table. Yet with the breakup with the Soviets, that went away. So in recent games we've seen a struggle between China and the US for that coveted position of number one on the table. This year, Britain has come in for the first time at number three. And of course, they were delighted that uh, this was achieved. Uh, and such emphasis was put upon this right from day one in terms of how many medals would be won by the British athletes. Of course, Britain being number three goes against the real trend in the world in terms of Britain's standing and position internationally, which has become much more of a peripheral nation, either economically or in terms of its foreign policy or its projection. But this is what the Olympics is really all about. It is about that projection which these nations are seeking to achieve. Look at us. Look at our prowess. Look at how good we are. Not only in terms of the NHS and the uh, Industrial Revolution as Britain projected in the opening ceremony, but also in terms of its sporting prowess and how good the nation is. In terms. So this is the real essence of what the Olympics has become. Governments are spending tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of, of dollars in elite athletics programs in order to dominate positions on the medal tables. So how should we look at this? I think it's, it's good that Muslims take a step back from this and keep well out of this nationalistic struggle which is going on as characterized by the Olympics. I'm reminded of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in which he said, he is not of us who calls for Asabiya, and he is of not of us who fights for Asabiya, and he is not of us who dies for Asabiya. And the similar hadith narrated by Abu Dawood, in which the Prophet ﷺ, he highlighted that we are all of the children of Adam, and Adam is from dirt. Let men quit their boasting of their own people and their lineage. And he likened those which do that to the dung beetle, which pushes the dung along by its nose. Surely a lesson for us in a time in which we are seeking the breakthrough of the re-establishment of our deen, of the re-establishment of our deen as a way of life, manifest in the Khilafah system, the Islamic State, in our lands, and the reunification of our lands, the breaking down of these false borders, which were artificially imposed upon us. It is not a time for us to be focusing upon how many medals our country or this country or our region or our tribe achieved. This is not the true goal and seeking of Muslims. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, alhamdulillahi, rabbil alameen.